It is time to talk about the Western Sydney Wanderers, a season that promised so much with the players they brought in, but ultimately it failed once again for Western Sydney. Hey, my name's Lockie, this is Coast Watch Football, and we are going through every single A-League club and giving them a season review. Well, the Western Sydney Wanderers, so much to be said, because they promised so much entering this season. I went as far as to predict them finishing fourth, a top four finish for Western Sydney Wanderers. I thought after the past seasons of, of, of promising, I mean, it seems like the same thing every year. It's like deja vu. They promise so much Western Sydney with the players they bring in, with the hype around the club, the last couple seasons at Combank Stadium now. And there's, there's, there's still that buzz around Western Sydney, but it's really starting to die down now because year after year, they are just failing to, to, to live up to that hype, to, to make finals. And there's so many questions around the club now in terms of, you know, not just on the field, but off the field. And we have seen some changes, of course. Western Sydney Wanderers, we should, of course, talk about the managerial change that happened relatively early in the season. Carl Robinson clearly wasn't, wasn't you know, the right man to lead this club forward. They weren't getting the results. And I remember that away loss to Brisbane Raw was 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 the final was the final straw that broke the camel's back. Mark Rodan came in and look, I did a video on it when he arrived and, and I thought it was a good appointment. Mark Rodan has a history in recent years of coming into A-League clubs and doing a pretty good job. When you look back at Wellington Phoenix and West United, the first season's in charge of those two clubs, he took them to finals. It was a little bit tricky for Rodan in this situation, coming in, you know, midway through a season pretty much, uh, you know, adopting this squad and there were some improvements here and there they were picking up some wins you think back to that Sydney derby win at home in, in sort of the midway part of the season which was almost a turning point for them but ultimately once again as it is the same story for so many of these bottom six sides they just failed to establish any momentum when you look at their numbers on the ladder six wins nine draws 11 losses and the concerning thing for West Sydney Wanderers is they only managed to score 30 goals which was the third lowest tally of goals in the league and and they conceded 38. But in attack, that was the thing that really was concerning. I mean, you look at the team who just finished above the Newcastle Jets, and we just did a season review on them. You can click up here if you want to check out the Newcastle Jets review. But Newcastle were fantastic in attack and had Daniel Pena, Beck Mikkel Datsy. These players were scoring goals for their team. But West Sydney Wanderers, they had the personnel. They had Tom Ahmed. They had Bernie Abini. They had Dimitri Petrados. These players who have, have shown in the past history of... Of, of, of being quality goal scorers at A-League level, and none of them really got going. I mean, I, I mean, I know Tom Hammond grabbed a couple goals to end out the season, but still, it was there wasn't enough leadership up front to to really make this Western Sydney Wanderers a formidable side. They were never going into a game thinking, oh, Western Sydney could score three or four here. It was never like that. And one of the key things that I picked up on watching many Western Sydney Wanderers games this season is just simply the lack of confidence in some individual players. Again, some of those names that I mentioned, I mean, a lot of those players, I mean, were getting plenty of game time, but there wasn't a, a sense of cohesion or, or confidence among those players in attack. And, you know, shuffling formation around a few times this season quite a bit, you know, from a 4-2-3-1 to sort of like a 4-5-1. And then I think even for a couple games, Mark Rodin played a diamond midfield. And I, I, that was another problem for Western Sydney Wanderers too. They never found their right formation. And what we've seen in the history of the A-League is that successful teams have, have, a, have a set game plan, have a set formation, and have a pretty consistent lineup that they run with. And Mark Rodin, this season was basically spent, you know, he spent the whole season sort of trying to figure out what was his best combination. When you look at the plays they brought in this season, West Sydney Wanderers, it was so promising. I mean, Dimitri Petrados, Tom Ahmed, fantastic goal scorer, Reese Williams back in defence, uh, Terry Antonis joined the club, uh, Jack Rodwell, of course, was a big signing from England as well. They, these were players that like promised so much, and on paper, I was like, this is a, this is like a good squad that, that, that could easily be playing, playing finals football. And again, just that lack of cohesion let them down. It just goes to show that signing a bunch of of you know players who have shown quality in the past isn't enough to to secure finals football in the A League. The interesting thing now is going to be looking at what Western Sydney do next season. And again, we're already seeing the transfer room is you know all over the place. It will certainly be interesting to see what Mark Rodan get, does with the side in his in his first you know full season in 
charge. I think having that preseason, you know, I, I, th I think it bodes well, again, as I mentioned earlier, knowing that Mark Rodin in his first season in charge of Wellington Phoenix, of West United, took them to finals. I think Wanderers should be cautiously optimistic that this next season could be a promising one. Mark Rodin is a good coach. He has shown that at A-League level. And if he, you know, there's still a bunch of players that Wanderers, I think, should be keeping around. We had some good performances this season from young Phil Kankar, who, who sort of had a breakout season in defense. Some of the young players coming through showed a little bit of promise in, in Carluccio and Lapane as well. I thought Adama Traoro was good at left back also. So, look, the, 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 there is a bit of a foundation there for West Sydney Wanderers to build around. I think Mark Rodin, I, th I think he's smart enough to know, you know, the areas that need strengthening in his side. And they could potentially build a pretty formidable squad next season. But yes, it will be very interesting to see who they bring in. What were your thoughts on Western Sydney Wanderers? And my question throughout this video is, do you think Western Sydney can make finals next season? I feel like we talk about it every single year. They just keep missing out in finals. They keep disappointing. But is next season, 22-23, is that the year the Western Sydney Wanderers finally finish in the top six? Can Mark Rudan do it? Let me know. If you have enjoyed this season review and you want to stick around for your club season review, make sure you hit the like button and hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any videos. My name is Lockie. This is Coastwatch Football. See you in the next one.